Hello, this is Artemis underscore anime, and today I am reading Midoriya's Weird Parentage by Sleepy Youngs. Summary Midoriya always thought he was clear on who his father was. After all, he never hid it. Not intentionally, at least. Well, apparently he was wrong. His class is just as clueless and oblivious as ever. Or, I really wanted a 5 plus 1 biological dad Zawa. 1. Are you All Might's secret love child? Midoriya, despite what others thought, looked like his father. In fact, he was a mini version of his dad. The only physical and biological attributes taken from his mom was his green eyes and freckles. Though, even then, it could be debated that he got his freckles from his father, seeing as the man had a litter of light, tan freckles that kissed his shoulders and went down his arms. Midoriya took up his dad's long, unruly hair that was always tied back into a low ponytail or a mess of buns. His hair was a very dark green, nearly black. He took his father's pale, pasty skin, and he also took his father's deep purple bags that rested under his eyes from both their horrible sleeping patterns. He had dark eyes that always seemed tired and stressed. That wasn't as warm and nice as his mother's. They seemed already done and exasperated. Midoriya even had migraines that never seemed to be soothed by medicine, thanks to his father's fucked up genes. In all honesty, Midoriya looks and acts like his father, which is why he is more than confused when no one figured out that his father is their homeroom teacher. Which is why, when Todoroki asks him if he's All Might's secret love child of all people, Midoriya couldn't help but laugh. All Might? My dad? Oh my god, you're serious? Midoriya could feel how his stomach muscles tighten, forcing him to bend over in a mist of laughter with his arms wrapped securely around his waist. Midoriya, I am being serious right now, and I would appreciate. Midoriya cried out louder in laughter to this. Oh, he hit the ground laughing. He had tears falling in his poor eyes that had felt dry, itchy, and stung. His head was pounding, sending an ache down his neck and a horrible migraine that was starting to blossom. But at that moment, Midoriya didn't care. This moment was too funny not to laugh. A simple no would have been fine. Todoroki turned on his heel and left after those few bitter words. Midoriya was left a suffering puddle of his tears and a throbbing migraine. 2. Our dads are brothers. Maybe. It was study hour for class 1A, and most took the opportunity to socialize rather than study. Most had their desks pushed together within their own respective friend groups. Ida was disappointed in the class actions, but soon took part in joining Uraka, Asui, Todoroki, and Shinzo. Hey Deku-kun! Shin! You two look a lot alike. Are you brothers? Uraka innocently asked, while Midoriya, he nearly choked on the air as he whipped his head around to turn into the lavender team. They showed a lot of freaky similarities now that Midoriya was truly looking at him. Same curly, unruly hair, same pale and pasty skin tone that was practically glowing in whiteness, same dark eyes, though Shinzo's being a dark purple that neared black, while his was a dark green that neared black. They shared the same horrendous, deep eye bags and the never-ending deadpan and aloof stare. And oh god, it didn't end there. They shared near-twin-like personalities because of course they do. They shared the same dry humor, the same sarcastic, witty remarks, the same low tolerance to bullshit, or really, low tolerance to people at all, if to be completely honest. And oh my sweet Nezu, Bedoria gave a horrified expression as did Shinzo, who seemed to draw the same conclusion as him. Are we related? Shinzo spoke up at the same time as him, his eyes widened and his face trailing with clear sheens of sweat. We're childhood friends from babies, Midoriya listed off with a whisper, an intrigued and horrified whisper. Your dad and I are close, like brotherly close, Shinzo also listed, and oh, Midoriya needed answers now. He was quick to shoot up from his chair, startling those around him, but before he could even attempt to storm over to his sleeping father, who was in the ugly yellow sleeping bag of his, Shinzo took his arm and yanked him back down. We'll ask him after school. Zuku and Uraka, for your question, were more like cousins, probably, Shinzo said, 
as Midoriya flipped down into his chair with a huff and an arms crossed. Yeah, and Dad nor Uncle Hajime didn't even have the nerve to tell us, Midoriya said in a childish puff while Shinzo shrugged off what he said noncommittally. Probably forgot, Midoriya deadpanned, and he pointedly stared at Shinzo. Forgot to tell us that we're mm, possibly, maybe, definitely, most likely related for 15 years. Shinzo only struggled once again, and Midoriya could only sigh. 3. The Hero Gala Midoriya, Kiru, will you be joining us later this weekend? Asui asked as she approached him along with Ida and Uraraka who didn't stray too far behind. Midoriya gave a small frown. He forgot about the Deku squad that was supposed to hang out throughout the weekend. He would go, but he has a gala to go to with his father. Usually, his dad avoids them like the plague and would rather hear about the underground heroic segment later on. But now, with how things were going as of late, his father had no choice but to begrudgingly go. His mother, at least, was going this time, wanting to give the man some sort of peace of mind. Some sort of comfort as things went on. That also meant that Midoriya was going. It wasn't like it was Midoriya's first gala. The first one was when he was six when his father had to go there in person to accept an award. The next one was when he was 11 when his dad also got another award, and also small recognition. At least, he did within the underground community. His father made sure to stay out of the spotlight. Sorry guys, I can't go this weekend. I have plans, Midoriya apologized, and Uraraka frowned with her face falling. Why not, Daku? She asked in a subdued tone as if she was near tears. Midoriya cringed. Midoriya hated to deal with other people's emotions. He hardly knew what to do with his own weird strained emotions, let alone others. He supposed that he got that from his father too, since his mother is sensitive and will cry easily and open with her emotions. Uh, I have to go with my father to a hero gala? Uraraka seemed more upset with his reason than Midoriya would have expected. Midoriya furrowed his brows to this. He was telling the truth. He had no reason to hide what he was doing over the weekend. I guess you don't want to hang out with us, but... Ah, Uraraka-san. We should believe what midoriya Khan says. If his father is going to the gala, his father is going to the gala. Ida lightly scolded the girl, whose face flushed in embarrassment. You're right. I'm sorry. We'll see you when we see you, Deku. Uraraka was quick to speed off after that. Asui was right behind her, perhaps to comfort the girl. Ida had toggled behind, with a smile playing on his face as Midoriya sighed in gratefulness. Thank you, Tanya. I'll see you there, and hopefully with Uncle Nati. And maybe even Tensei. Midoriya waved goodbye after that, running off from the ancient court to teen who went in the other direction of his friends. 4. Childhood Embarrassments Childhood story time! Ashido cheered as the common room went silent for a moment, staring incredulously at the pink-skinned teen. You just fucking want embarrassing stories, Bakugo grumbled under his breath. Midoriya agreed with his other best friend, who also happened to grow up, though the Bakugo family wasn't a hero family. His family was fashion designers, an average working family, and Midoriya knew Bakugo since birth, just like Shinzo and Ida. His mother introduced him to Bakugo, and ever since then, the two of them were basically brothers. Growing up together, Midoriya had a lot of secrets on Bakugo. Heck, he has a lot on Shinzo and even Tenya. Though he also knew that they had a lot of secrets on him, too. Oh yeah? Well, Mr. Explodey, what childhood embarrassment do you have? Bakugo scoffed as he gave a glare towards Ashido. Nothing raccoon eyes. Midoriya sniggered as he threw a smirk towards Bakugo. Oh, he was going to enjoy this, even if Bakugo was going to kick his ass into oblivion later. Age 4, you used your quirk on the slide, trying to fly like All Might. Instead, though, you busted your ass and nearly broke your nose. Also, you cried like a baby. Midoriya popped his lips as his eyes lit up, also noting the pure joy in mischief. And it was so worth seeing Bakugo's face turn redder than Kirishima's hair. Shinzo soon fell into loud laughter as hiccuping snorts passed his lips. Oh, oh my god, I remember that. We were at school and... <laughs> 
cue of the purple-haired teen falling off the couch and rolling onto the floor, dying in his own painful laughter. I fucking hate you both. Bakugo didn't even speak loudly. He could only stew in his embarrassment as the class soon broke out into laughter at him. Ah, Hitoshi, didn't you use your quirk in the mirror once when you were five to see if you could brainwash yourself? Ida cut through the joyous laughter with a playful and teasing smile. Midoriya had never seen Shinzo shut up so fast, not even when Shinzo's father threatened to not get him a cat for being too much of a little shit. <laughs> oh yeah, your dumbass actually brainwashed yourself too. Uncle Shota and Uncle Hajime had to save you. Shut up, Katsuki. Nobody asked you. But you, Tenya, you, at the age of ten, thought you could climb a tree with the help of your engines, and you took a running head start, and instead of climbing, you knocked yourself out, Shinzo smugly said as Ida went silent fast, and he took to glaring at both Bakugo and Shinzo. Okay, Hito. For three years of your life, you had a black cat onesie that you refused to take off because you had to, and I fucking quote, be the one with your inner catness, Midoriya defended Ida, and Shinzo bristled and glared at him. In middle school, you came to the school literally in a can of nothing but pure espresso, and when the teacher tried to take it, you took a sip and said, try me, bitch, and, or you'll have Satan as your daddy tonight. Wait, didn't you get suspended for that? Ida, in a highly amused tone, asked. Midoriya couldn't help but give a betrayed expression at his best friend who was trying to trade sides on him. His class was absolutely terrified as much as they were mildly intrigued at the sudden revealed group of friends. They didn't know that Bakugo, Midoriya, and Shinzo, and Ida were childhood best friends, but apparently you learn something new every day. Well, I didn't know I'd be blessed with the gossip god tonight, but thank you, Jesus, Ashido whispered in nothing but wonder and awe as the group of four carried on to spill every last secret they knew about each other. 5. Chaos in the Home Midoriya didn't have friends over often. At least, friends that weren't his normal childhood friends, Bakugo, Shinzo, or Ida. People from school hardly came over to his house, and it wasn't as if they weren't allowed to. It was just Midoriya didn't want to deal with anyone besides his usual trio of people. But apparently, Yue didn't get that message. Currently, he's inside of his living room with more than 10 people inside, and Midoriya was already done. He wanted to go upstairs to his room and sleep. He hated socializing, yet both of the squads of Bakugo and Deku had decided that it would be a wonderful idea to go and invite themselves over to his house. How fantastic. You know, Deku, I honestly thought your home would be smaller. Thanks, I think, Midoriya lazily said as he leaned against the couch, seeing all of the space was gone through. He could easily sit on the ottoman or even the free spot on the love seat, but the floors were more comfortable. Hey Midoriya, where's your mom? Or your dad? Ashido asked with a bright grin as she took in the surroundings of his home. Really, it was like she was a puppy in a new place. Mom is still at work and dad's on his way. I usually come home with my dad from work, so yeah. Midoriya muttered while the others nodded their head. So, the four of you are childhood friends? Dude, that's kind of wild, Kaminari asked excitedly, as if he really was waiting for some big dramatic story when really there wasn't one to tell. Uh, Midoriya hesitated, feeling more awkward at the moment. My dad and mom introduced all of us as babies. I mean, my mom knows the Bakugos and dad knows the Idias and the Shinsos really well. Well, we recently found out that dad is related to Uncle Hachime, so he's really my uncle, which, wow. Are you still salty he didn't tell you? Shinzo asked in a snore as Midoriya rolled his eyes. He literally said, Oh right, Hachime, he's my biological brother. You and Hitoshi are first cousins or whatever. And proceeded to take a long drink of his coffee. Bakugo chuckled fondly to this as he grinned with full teeth on display. Gotta love Uncle Shota. Bakugo had the nerve to sound fond as his smile turned soft. Each squad didn't know what to do with this Bakugo and each collectively freaked out. Oh my god, I need a picture of Bakube smiling! Quick, someone get your phone out! Ashido ordered with her jaw low, her eyes shedding falling tears. Bro, you can do feelings? Kirishima nearly sounded offended that he'd never seen Bakugo's true smile. 
Hiroshima also sounded damn near panic from being alive to witness the smile. What do we do with this? Like, I guess I'll just die? Kaminari said, lying flat on his back on the couch. Gyro, with a sigh, consoled the electric quirk user as if they were in some weird therapy session. You assholes, I can smile if I want. Cue Bakugo round of pops and explosions and feral growls that only sent the others into more of a panic. Midoriya could only rapidly blink at this utter mess. He saw the front door open within the mass of chaos, though no one heard it within their own loud voices. His dad was home, yet the only one to notice was him and Shinzo. Since Ida was trying to keep everyone calm again, and Bakugo was trying to kill everyone. What the absolute fuck happened in here? Izuku, when you said you were having friends over, I didn't think you meant this. Heavy silence took over the home, as heads soon snapped over to the intruding voice with a gape and wide eyes. Me and you both, Dad, me and you both. Midoriya said in a deep sigh while he watched the older man shuffle past the shell-shocked and highly amused teenagers. Just don't break anything. With that, his dad left upstairs, and a beat of silence traveled throughout the air before Ashido yelled out, I saw Sensei is married when with a kid? More chaos induced afterwards. Plus one. Reveal it all. Midoriya has an announcement. His dad spoke tiredly as he hardly made any movement to get out of the yellow sleeping bag of his. All right. Midoriya took a stand at the podium as he stared at the class who was watching him with curious eyes. Some knew what he was going to say, yet most of them didn't believe him or they were still in heavy shock. He thinks it's the latter. Shota is my dad or something like that. Todoroki stopped saying I'm All Might's love child or whatever since, yeah, dad is right here. He gave a kick to the old man who grunted in displeasure but didn't say or do anything else before rolling further away like a roly-poly. So, uh, I'll go now? Izuku strolled out of the classroom while it was quiet, but as soon as he left the class, he could hear a roaring of, Sensei, is your what now? Izuku cringed and ran as fast as he could to whatever his feet would allow him to go. He wasn't going to deal with that. He hoped the old man didn't have to deal with too many nagging questions. Notes. This was really fun to write. I love the biological dad Zawa AU. Whether or not he's with Inko or some other ship, it's just amazing. I've also never done a 5 plus 1 thing either, so this was different. I don't know if I'll do it again. Eh, knowing me, I'll absolutely will. I have too many ideas on the brain, it hurts. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed reading. And that was Midoriya's Weird Parentage by Sleepy Youngs. Thank you all for being so patient, and thank you for listening to this. I will see you all next week. Bye!